Hey crafters, happy summer. I hope you're enjoying a little extra fun in the sun and lots of crafty time, maybe even some extra fun time with people you care about. I've been doing a little bit of both, but I'm also excited to get doing some crafty projects because this time of year is so fun, so inspiring, warm weather, bright colors. I love it. Turns out this is the perfect time of year to do another upcycle from free project. You guys seem to really enjoy these videos. They are a lot of fun to make. They're also kind of a creative challenge because not only do I have to get some items for free, but I then have to find ways to turn those garments into something maybe that fits a little bit better or is a little bit more personalized to me than the original garments were. In today's video, we've got two such pieces that I think are going to be perfect to upcycle or flip into something new, something I could wear this summer, maybe into this next season as well. Should be a lot of fun. See if you get inspired to maybe take a few pieces from your own closet or maybe something someone gave you that doesn't quite work just right for you and upcycle or DIY them into something that works better for you. Join me for the crafting adventure today. Let me show you the pieces we're working with, the ideas I've got for upcycling them, and then of course, how they turn out. Let's grab a little DIY magic, roll up our crafty sleeves, and get started. What? Overalls? Yes, please. Oh my goodness. I was excited to find these being given away. We've got what may be kind of a linen-y, cotton -y blend of our olive green fabric. I love the wide leg. I love that button placket. That's really cute. The V-neck in the front and the V in the back is kind of fun and funky. So I think these guys are going to be pretty cute to work with. However, they have been well loved. So we've got some issues to fix. Um, there are a couple holes like right at the base of the button placket, we have a pretty big rip in the fabric. So we're gonna have to do some patching there. And then I just discovered a rip near one of the buttonholes. So got some patching, maybe some sewing around those holes to fix that. I'm also thinking of adding maybe a piece of like fabric or a ribbon or something just across that back V because the straps kind of fall off my shoulders pretty easily. And if I could add a little connector piece somewhere in there, it might help make that stop. Once we got that fixed, I'm really thinking we might need to paint these pants. Yeah, maybe like get some fabric paint. Maybe we could like stamp down the legs, you know, with a fabric stamp. Or maybe we could like splatter paint or smudge some paint all over. My goal with these pants is to turn them into project pants. You know, pants I can wear while I'm tie-dyeing or painting or cooking or whatever. And I need to be okay with getting stuff on them because when I'm doing projects, it can get messy. But I think that would be a really great use for these pants because they are kind of worn. So if I add a little bit of paint and a little bit of smudging and stuff all over them, then that can kind of be a look. <laughs> and then as I do more projects, they'll just kind of add to that project pants, painty look. Anyway, that's that's my vision. Let's take a look at some of the fixes we need to make and then we'll get going. Okay, here is the back of the overalls. Pretty cute with these darts in the back. That's super cute. Okay, but here are those straps. And since the V can really open, definitely falls off my shoulders a lot. Wonder if I could, hmm, maybe I should start by stitching this V closed. That would keep it from moving around a lot. Another idea is I could take a little piece of ribbon or a little piece of fabric and just put a connecting, connecting band in between the straps. Ooh, or I could use elastic. Hmm, that be an idea. Maybe I'll stitch that V closed first and then try it on and see how it feels. Cool, let's look at the holes in the front. Well, now we're looking at the front, but I've kind of got that button placket all opened up because 
at the very base of the placket, we got a giant hole. Like, I think I'm going to have to undo some of this stitching, get to the fabric underneath, and patch this hole right here, right there, and then sew the button placket back down. Let's take a look at that from the outside. Oh boy. Yeah, big hole. Looks like part of the placket was stitched to some unreinforced bit of this fabric. So yeah, giant hole. That's probably why somebody gave it away. And then let's see, buttonhole problems. Now we got a giant hole right here. How on earth did that happen? No idea. Maybe part of the buttonhole was stitched incorrectly and it was catching some weird fabrics that made a hole. I don't know. Let's see. I think I'm going to have to kind of do the same thing. Like go into the inside. There it is. Get a big old patch on there. And then go from there. Hmm. Okay. So probably need to work on that part first. And then maybe stitch down the back a little bit and go from there. Let's do it! Well, I went through my patch stash, and unfortunately I don't have an olive green, but I do have kind of a dark gray. So I think that'll be okay. Could show us through a little bit. Okie dokie. Let me put some here on that button, and then of course we gotta take care of this button placket. So, oy oy oy. Let's do this guy first. See, we got a big old hole right there. Let's do a little thread ripping. Let's see if we can get to that spot. Hopefully I don't rep, wreck, wreck it, rip it <laughs> more. I've done that. Let's not do that today. Hmm. I'm getting there. Oh boy. Now I'm looking at the buttons. We might have to re-sew the buttons on, too. <laughs> I can see why somebody would want to pass this on. Because, like, you know, you've gotten a lot of life out of it. Now it's got a whole bunch of holes. Probably going to get more. But, you know. That's where we come in. We like a project. Okay. So we got the hole exposed. Of course, it's got a little bit of this interfacing showing through okay there he is wow, I can almost put my finger through it all right I'm gonna cut a circle of this of course following package instructions iron the circle on and then test it to make sure it's on there hopefully it'll be okay kind of stabilize that fabric and then I'm gonna need to stitch this back down <laughs> I'll probably end up, well, I might end up doing that by hand, just to make sure I get it. Okay, cool. Next spot that needs a patch. Doodly doodly do. Okay, near the buttonhole. Where is it? Hmm. Maybe the buttonhole was stitched wrong, and it ended up catching some of the, I don't know, wrong fabric and then that pulled? I don't know. Okay. What's going on over here, guys? There we go. Okay, so that was stitched down, and I think some extra thread from this piece got caught in the 
buttonhole and then it caused the fabric to pull and tear I, I don't know there we go we got ourselves a hole um, still have a lot of little stringy bits in there might need to let a few more of these guys go free uh. Okay, almost got this hole free. I'm gonna next cut out some patches, do a little bit of ironing, and uh, let's fix some of these holes. Okay guys, update. After a certain amount of fiddly sewing and at least one and a half crafting YouTube videos, we have the back stitch closed. That's really cool. Hopefully that'll be enough to keep the straps on. We got, oh boy, oh boy. We got the button placket piece restitched. I did need to go back and redo part of this buttonhole which I had unsewn trying to get to the hole. So hopefully that's okay. 
However, as I was looking at the back, I found another hole. And then I found another hole over here somewhere. Oh, I don't know. I found a couple more holes. So I'm going to reheat up my iron, cut out some more patches, fix a few more of these guys, and like scan the entire garment to see if there are any more spots that need to be fixed. <sighs> but after that, then I think we're ready for painting. So yay! Okay, phew. I think we've got all the mendings mended. And all the patchy bits patched. And it's time to paint. So we've got my favorite, quote unquote, soft paint from Tulip. I also really like the matte stuff. I like that this stuff lays into the fabric instead of like puffy paint standing up from the fabric. I feel like this ends up being really flat to the fabric. Looks a little bit more screen printed if that's what you're going for or whatnot. So I think that'll be perfect. I got some brushes. I've got a tarp. And I'm going to be putting that tarp down in my kitchen. And I think just going to town on this baby. I think I'm going to save the paint stencils for another project. I do have some stencils and paint stamps that I really love. But I think for this project I'm going to go a little more random. A little more messy and like art teacher smudgy is the vibe we're going for. I think I'm going to fold my pant legs so that I can see the side seam. And then I'm just gonna kinda go all ham on the side seams on both sides. I'll probably put some smudges on the front as well, but I think I really want it kinda going up the side of the pant leg. I think that'd look really cool. I'll probably, you know, just do some like smushy brush strokes, um, maybe like some hand prints, some finger smudges, some stuff like that. Art teacher meets kindergartner who loves finger paint. That is the vibe we're going for. And then once each pant leg is dry on the side, I'll probably, you know, go back, do a little bit more in the front. Not aiming to get too much on the bib of the pants, but that's probably fine. Once that's dry, I'll flip it over and just check, see if I need to add a little bit more to the back. And I think that'll be good. It'll be just kind of a messy, spastic, just crazy, go for it kind of process. Normally, if I was painting a garment, I would normally put wax paper or a strip of like freezer paper on the inside of the pant leg to make sure that what I'm painting on the front doesn't get through to the back of the fabric. But since we're going for kind of messy here, I'm not going to be lined in the pant legs. But just FYI, if you're painting stuff, Especially like a t-shirt, you don't want your, your paint to bleed through. Okay, so I gotta t clear away the furniture in my kitchen and put my tarp down and get painting. Let's do it.
And here are the overalls, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, looking at these all finished, this definitely makes me really happy. I think we accomplished the art teacher meets kindergartner vibe. And um, that's a pretty positive vibe. I'm pretty happy with this. I had originally thought about mixing some of my bright colors with a little bit of brown or white to kind of tone them down a little bit. And I think that would have been a fun vibe as well, but I'm all about rainbow colors, so I'm loving this. And of course, every time I wear these for tie-dyeing or painting or just mess making in general, I'm just going to add to the mess on these pants. So I won't feel bad. I'll be able to wear these for my projects, be comfy, and uh, I think they're pretty cute too. So let me show you the back of the pants as well. And here's the back. I tried to kind of make the front and the back similar, but I think I actually ended up adding, I don't know, a few more like brush stroke motions, maybe a little more color on the back, but whatevs, whatevs, I love it. Um, I also noticed there are a couple of stains on one of the pant legs, so we just fixed that problem. I also like how I stitched that back V closed i think that's going to be enough to keep the straps on my body for the most part i'll kind of experiment if that ends up being too floppy i'll probably just take some really thick ribbon and sew a strap just between the two straps Well, I was really excited to find these pants being given away by a neighbor of mine. These are by the brand Sigrid Olsen. And there are just a really wide leg, stretchy waist, kind of cropped, comfy, breezy summer pant. And I think these are going to be really nice to wear. I do like the wide leg, just kind of breezy pants style, especially for summer. Put them with a t-shirt and some sandals and there you go. These are a really nice material as well. They're 55% linen and 45% rayon. So definitely a comfy pant for the hot weather. And they do fit 
pretty well. So that's a nice treat. Big shout out to person who has given these away. I think these will be great in my closet. And of course, great for a little flip project too, because that fiber content is really easy to dye. Linen and rayon, we like it. So, you know, I think I'm going to take these guys from the black and cream combination and do a little dyeing. Black and cream, great, lovely color combination, just doesn't really work on me very well. So I think we've got to take these in a new direction. I like the cream background. Um, I like that it's kind of a warm tone. That's kind of telling me, hey, let's take this in a warm tone direction. And I couldn't resist. Today I'm thinking yellow. Ah, oh, I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of skirts and pants in kind of warm tone, goldeny yellows and People kind of using that as almost like a neutral and pairing it with bright colors to go with it. And I think that's a really fun idea. You might even remember my tropical pants last year from my thrift flip video for the summer. I'll link to that one down below. But I had these yellow and white tropical pants that I loved. However, I needed to dye them because the fabric was kind of sheer. So the yellow turned more to a pink and an orange, which I loved but the yellow pants went away. So maybe today is my day to get these yellow pants back. Ha ha. Of course, I will be doing this in my kitchen laboratory. I'll be following package directions here on our RIT dye. I'm gonna be filling up my sink with hot water. And then I'll be adding a bit of salt to that dye bath as they recommend for this fiber content. Adding a little dish soap. Swishing the pants around, trying to stir them a lot to try to get the dye color as even as I can. I know that's tricky to do in a sink, um, but I'll be doing that. And then when they've reached a color that I like, I'll take them out, fill up the sink with some clean water and some Rit Dye Fixative to try to lock in that color a little bit before I can then launder the pants. I don't think I'm going to be tying these up very much or adding any patterns to these. They have enough pattern as is. So I think I will just try to be dyeing them a straight yellow color and, of course, stirring as much as I can to try to get that dye even. Let's head on over to the kitchen lab and get started. Okay, we are in the kitchen laboratory and we have got some supplies in place. Always good to have some cleaning supplies and ready to go. We'll need the dish soap and the salt to add to the dye bath. Of course, we got some designated gloves and a stirring spoon. Then we'll be working in our sink. Of course, we are covering surfaces wherever possible. You know, good prep means less cleanup, right? It's always nice to not have to be having a cleanup emergency in the middle of a project. So that's always good. Let's uh, get some water hot. Let's fill up that sink and let's get to dying. Okay, guys, we got our sink full of hot water, got some salt in there, a little bit of dish soap, time to add our dye. I had a hard time deciding which yellow to use. There was a really pretty lemon yellow as well, and then there's a darker, more um, mustardy color as well. This one's the golden yellow, so I think it's a nice middle ground between kind of a cooler yellow and a warm yellow. Hopefully it should play really nice with the cream in the pants. So, there we go. I think I'm gonna be adding about half of a bottle or so. Whoa, that is vibrant. That might be all we need. Whew. Let's try it. Okay, stirring it around. Wow. That is awesome. Definitely kind of looks like a almost kind of marigold color so far. Whew. All right, so now we gotta get our pants wet to try to help the dye spread across them. Let's get them wet, here we go.
Okay, here it goes. Ooh. Okay, get them in there. All right. These guys, I'm guessing, might take 20 minutes, maybe half an hour to get the color. We'll see. Some dyes are really pigmented and they dye things, you know, things will get dark really quickly. Others take a little more time. I didn't use all that much dye in here, so I may end up going for a little bit of a longer time. This doesn't seem to be really dark because it's yellow, so... We'll see, I'm going to turn on my timer for 20 minutes and I'll kind of start with that. And then I'll try to be stirring these quite a bit. And then I'll show you when I take them out. Of course, after we take them out, we'll then need to refill the sink with clean water and we'll get some fixative in there. And then we'll put these guys back in for a little time in the fixative. And then we should be able to wash them and see what they look like. Okay, let's set the timer, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, guys. I actually kept the pants in the dye for about half an hour and stirred them around a bunch. I think they're looking pretty good. I'm going to be getting them into a sink full of hot water and fixative now. And I'll stir them around in there for about 20 minutes. Then I can launder these guys and then we can see what they look like. I am pretty happy with this sunny yellow color that's going on and uh, with any luck they might actually just look like they were supposed to be yellow and black all along who knows all right I'll show you what they look like when they're washed and dried well here are the pants you guys oh my goodness I love these so much now um this sunshine yellow I think is one of my new favorites and I'm just loving it, it makes me really happy I'm going to be pairing these pants, I think, with lots of bright colored t-shirts and tank tops this summer. I kind of feel like I won't even have to just stick with yellow and black. I'm just going to use bright colors and put them with the pants because, you know, one tropical print, I don't think it has to match, right? We're going for that beachy vibe. <laughs> we'll see but you guys this was a really fun project and very easy honestly for an upcycle project if you're dipping your toe into the upcycle diy world i totally recommend just changing the color of something if you have a garment that's mostly natural fiber you could use rit dye just like what i used if you're doing something that's got more synthetics in it you want to use a dye that's designed for synthetics Rit Dye's also got a line for that. Read the bottle, read the directions. You could also check out our tie-dye playlist here on the channel because we do a lot of fun stuff. One of my favorite ways to transform a garment at one of the easiest. Well, you guys, if you get behind changing something that used to be the wrong color or the wrong fit and turning it into something that's just right for you, give this video a big thumbs up. <laughs> And consider subscribing for more fun summary stuff coming to you from Partners in Craft. A big shout out and big thank you to everybody who's been liking, subscribing, commenting. It's been super fun to read those and really encouraging. Also really helps here on the channel as well. Okay, I'm going to go out, put together a fun in the sun outfit and show you what these guys look like in the wild. <laughs> 